Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. We are talking about something irrational, the way that we choose technology. Sometimes the way we choose or we don't choose technology is not rational. And especially we are talking about the unknown, something that scares us, something that uh, we are not comfortable with, something that uh, we don't want to admit to ourselves that uh, is scary. So one thing from somebody who better than me can uh, talk about this, uh, Emmanuel Rosen, the author of The Anatomy of Buzz, says that most of the criticism comes from people who don't know what they're talking about. And uh, let's see. Most of the time we say, I couldn't do something like that. It doesn't work because the database, the regular explanation, or the XML or whatever didn't work. You, you must be familiar with this. And I'm going to, to tell you how this thing works with a few stories. So the first story about cannot, don't, or won't is about Mozart. You know that Mozart sucks. Do you? Or maybe not. Um, anyway, if it does or does not, it's for the same reason that Perl or PHP, MySQL, databases, languages suck. So let's see. First of all, the rumor. Whenever you have a new thing, there will be somebody who tells you something good or something bad about that. So it starts this way. You know, the emperor at the time of Mozart was the most important critic in the empire. He didn't know anything about music, by the way, but since he was the emperor, he was quite important one. And uh, so one day, while making breakfast in front of all the dignitaries, he asks, uh, um, how good is it, this Mozart? And whenever you ask something like that, somebody will tell you, his remarkable majesty, I heard an extraordinary opera of his last month. So there must be somebody who has done some research and provides some information. So the, the opera was Idomeneo, King of Crete, and immediately there is somebody else who didn't like it. So he said that was a tiresome piece, and then we have some flame here. Tiresome? Uh, yes, a young man trying to impress beyond disabilities, too much spice, too many notes, too many notes. Okay, so far the emperor says, okay, let's hear this uh, uh, Mozart, but, you know, he has the inner conviction. So he knows that something is wrong with this Mozart, and uh, when finally the concert uh, ends and he's satisfied, he starts by giving some positive feedback to the author. So he says, a good effort, uh, yeah, extraordinary, very good. Uh, and Mozart is pleased in the beginning, hearing these uh, things uh, is new. So Mozart asks, did you like it? And suddenly the emperor converts the feedback into a bug report. Uh, say, yeah, it was very good, but uh, now and then, uh, you know, just now and then was, uh, how can I know, a touch of... Um, and then Mozart starts to panic. How do you, what do you mean? And the emperor tries to uh, find a repeatable bug report and ask somebody for um, a suggestion. How would you one say, director, you remember that guy who didn't like the Mozart in the first uh, place. So the director says, too many notes. And so remember, the rumor comes back Exactly. And it, it says, like it was his idea, that there were too many notes. Mozart, of course, uh, you know, when uh, you file a bug report, the support uh, guys will uh, not agree with you in the, in, immediately. We'll have to argue back and down. And finally, the, the emperor say, starts doing some uh, documentation of his bug by asking impossible things to the CTO, and the CTO says, of course, Majesty, you are right, and in the end, Mozart has to uh, downgrade the bug report to a feature request. <laughs> so the emperor says, 
just cut to, uh, a few notes and it will be perfect. And Moza says, which few notes did you have in mind? <laughs> okay, but this is the story. Does it sound familiar? Now, let's try the same story with a different set. How good is it, this pearl? And of course, somebody who has seen it, it's remarkable majesty, I saw a most extraordinary web service created by Perl. Uh, Gearman distributed service. And immediately somebody says, oh, a write-only type of language, I know it. Write-only? Most complicated language, undistinguishable from line noise. Too much compact, too many punctuation signs. Or maybe you have seen this one. How good is this, this MySQL? Yeah, you know, this guy knows everything, so it's remarkable majesty. A friend of mine has a very popular website powered by MySQL, Facebook, a social network. That, a toy database, I've seen that too. A toy, you know, the flame. A miserable file system uh, with SQL trying to impress beyond its skills. No transactions, no, not a mission critical database. So you can do it more Java, Linux, uh, Python, Windows 7, and you will find somebody who is not, uh, uh, who doesn't agree on that. So too many distributions, too many white spaces. Too much hidden DRM. Maybe it's right, but maybe not. And so on. Let me tell you another story. When I was 13 years old, my French professor told me that you can't learn English. There are too many consonants can be pronounced by somebody in the south of Europe. Now, you, you may um, agree that uh, although I have a horrible Italian accent, I am speaking something that sounds like English. So this was 20 years later that finally I recognized that my French professor not only didn't speak English, he didn't speak even French. So I realized that maybe his advice was not sound. So I decided to learn English, and I found out that the problem is not too many consonants, it's too many vowels. But this is a different story. Or, you know, I'm Italian, so for me, uh, the only coffee that is worth mentioning is espresso. American coffee was an abomination that I was uh, uh, advised not to touch at all. But, you know, if you go to America and you find somebody who make, makes good coffee, it's quite good. Or when, back in the 80s, they told me that a Mac is something that uh, should not be used by real geeks because icons are for sissies. Now, if you see here, I have a Mac. So after a while, I realized that they, that was not a good example as well. Perl is night noise. For many years, they told me this, and I was using C for system administration. It was really stupid until finally I tried it, and it worked. So you have seen, you have heard the stories like that databases don't work, or you don't need databases. Uh, a spreadsheet is what you need. Uh, database are just a few PHP lines, uh, or you should not use VI because it sucks, or Emacs because it sucks, or MySQL because it sucks, or PostgreSQL because it sucks enough. Sometimes the problem is near to you. Sometimes the problem exists between keyboard and chair. So it happened to me many times, you have seen that, once upon a time, I didn't make any mistakes. Then I grew up, and I found them. So what happens when you have a complex program? You have a complex program full of many components. These components could be JavaScript, AJAX, CSS, um, PHP, and so on. So what happens? You have an error in your complex application. What do you do? Now, the rule of complex application says that you always blame what you don't understand. So you are an HTML expert, then you can blame Ajax, PHP, SQL. Are you a PHP expert? Everything else can be blamed. SQL expert, PHP is, the, is at fault, of course. 
are, if you want more things to blame, you can blame the operating system, uh, XML uh, processing library, the regular expressions, this is a favorite of mine, or actually of many people. Uh, you can, learn, um, can blame the language, you can blame the weather, especially in Belgium. You can blame abduction by aliens, and if you are Italian, you have a special thing to blame, you can blame your prime minister gaffes. <laughs> so there is the first rule of programming, which is, uh, you can find in this uh, URL, and the first rule says that is always your fault. Now, the second rule says there is no second rule. As an example, you have a problem in your application, and you blame what you don't understand. For instance, let's blame MySQL. Then you keep looking for a non-existent MySQL bugs. Actually, you file a bug, and you scream at the support people, and of course, you fail to look at the real cause that was in your code, and you waste hours, days, maybe weeks and months not to find the real error. So remember, it's always your fault. Um, but OK, this is the problem. So what, what can you do? First of all, you need to be curious. And then you need to be brave. So once you understand that uh, you are at fault, you need to do something. So curiosity is what give, takes you to the next step. Curiosity is the foundation of innovation. There is no science or technology without curiosity. Uh, what else? You need bravery. Because being curious is not enough. You really need to try it on your own. Really. You must go in front of the bull, take the bull by the horns, and do something. So how do we assess the problem? First of all, don't blame anything else. Assume, assume that you are wrong, and then the error is going to be easier to find. So the things that you should do is find your weakness, and uh, get curious about this weakness. You can explore it a little bit more and find uh, some things about that. Learn how to exploit this weakness and uh, make it into a strength. And then, finally, you can fix the problem. So once you are facing the unknown, you know, this is pretty scary. The unknown scares everybody. So don't assume that uh, you can't deal with that. Sometimes the unknown is less frightening than you thought. So this is a duck. It looked like a dinosaur, yeah? But it's a duck. So that's it. I shared with you some personal experience, and I hope you will find uh, some good thoughts for improving your own career. Thanks. Thank you, Giuseppe, and uh, I'll be...